Hello pre-calc kids, welcome back to another lesson in AP Pre-Calculus. This is Mr. Bean, and in today's lesson we're going to take a look at this parametrization stuff uh, that we've done earlier in this unit, uh, but look at it with regards to conic sections and how we apply it there. So first of all, let's just remind ourselves real quick what we did in the very first lesson of this unit, and that was we took a look at implicitly, implicitly defined functions and talked about how you can put them in parametric form with the coordinate point being each coordinate point or each value of the coordinates has its own equation. So you have an x of t and a y of t. These are equations that help you figure out the coordinate points for every single x and y value. So what we're going to look at first is just a really simple way to per, per, parameter, hold on, parametrize. Yeah, I've been practicing how to pronounce this. Okay, parametrize. Simple param parametrization. <laughs> Shoot, I messed it up. Simple parametrization technique. So if we got a function f of x and then y equals f of x can be parametrized as, so what we do here is it's actually really, really simple. We just say that the x of t is going to be a t and the y of t, we'll just let that equal f of t. Okay, you'll see what I mean here in just a second. Let's do, actually, before we even show this one, let's just do an example of this. So if you go down on your on your notes here and look at the very first example, we have there uh, a function f of x, it's in terms of x, and to be able to find the parametrization of this, it's just really simple. We say that the x value is gonna be a t, and the y value is going to be t cubed minus two. And that is it. So instead of an x, we just put a t. And instead of the x of t, we put t. This is the simplest and easiest way to create a parametric function, to parametrize this function. And then this, so then it's like a parametric form. And uh, now we should probably put the domain, I'll, I'll write here real quick, that the domain is just going to be all real numbers. In other words, from negative infinity to positive infinity. It's everything, the domain of this. So the t value is going all the way to the, to the negative side and all the way to the positive side to create this graph. Okay, so now let's go back to the notes here. And now we're talking about if f is invertible. Now that just means, can you take the inverse? Well, if you can take the inverse, actually, let's do this first. Before, before we, I even show you this, let's go to this problem. We're going to do the inverse of this. So what if we had to do the inverse? Well, let's see here. If I took x cubed, so I'd say this is, uh, to do the inverse, I'm going to swap the x and the y. So I'm going to say x equals y cubed minus 2. And then I'll get x plus 2 equals y cubed. And then I have the cube root of x plus 2 equals y. Well, that means if I were to do the parametrization of this, it would just be t comma and then the cube root of t plus 2. Okay, so this is the parametrization of the inverse. But what I did is I found the inverse first and then parametrized that. There's actually a much, much easier way of doing this. And here's the cool thing. So if you can take the inverse, then the inverse parametrization technique is just this. You swap these. The t goes to the y part, and then the function becomes the x-coordinate. It's really cool. So in other words, I take this answer, and I just swap it. So I'm going to put or, I could say that this is t cubed minus 2 comma t. Boom, and then that's it. This would be my answer. Now, if I graph both of these, they will look identical. They're going to be exactly the same thing. And again, the domain of this, if I wanted to say that the domain, um, let me just say all real numbers by using that symbol, the weird kind of R thing. So all real numbers. So these are identical. So it's actually a lot easier to just swap this X and Y here for the parametrization. And that gives you the, uh, the graph of the inverse. If you can take the inverse of this thing. All right, now the last part of this, um, this is just uh, to show you that there's so many different ways of being able to create the parametrization. In fact, it's infinite number of ways. So instead of if x of t, uh, in this case, if x of t was not t, but instead it was 2t, so we'd have this, 2t. If you had that, all that means is that wherever you see this t value, you would change it to 2t. So it'd be 2t cubed minus 2. So again, I'm relating this to part A here. Uh, and then that, uh, oh, you got to simplify it. So then we'd have 2t comma, and then this is now 8t cubed minus 2. So the graph of this parametrization 
and this parameterization are identical. They are exactly the same thing. If you graph these on a graphing calculator, you'd see they'd, they'd be identical. So in other words, this is just to remind you there is an infinite number of ways that you could write out the parameterization of this stuff. All right, now let's take a look at how to do parabolas. So now, since we've we've done that part, the parabolas are actually the easiest one because it's exactly what we just talked about. Um, you've, if you're solving for y, so let's do this. If the equation can be solved for y, solve for y and replace x with t. So let's take this equation and solve for y. You got x squared here, so that would be too hard. Let's just solve for y on this. So negative 2y equals negative x squared. Divide both sides by negative 2. We get y equals x squared over 2. So now since we have a y equals, this is what we've already practiced, and that is just the x coordinate is going to be the t. The y coordinate is going to be y of t. So that is this. It's going to be t comma, and then instead of an x squared over 2, it is t squared over 2. And there we go. Um, the domain, of course, would be all real numbers uh, on this one. There, I'll write that out. All right, now the next one. So in this example, it's a little bit harder to solve for y. We could, but then you're going to get it like a plus or minus square root symbol. So let's instead solve for x. Uh, and so that means this is a uh, this is a parabola that opens left and right, right? Yeah, we we practiced those earlier. So uh, let's see here. I get x over four equals subtract the y, add the one, so that gives me a one minus y squared. Multiply everything by four. I get four minus four. 4y squared. And now that I have x by itself, if it's x equals, this is where the x coordinate is the actual equation. So we'd say 4 minus 4, but not y squared. It's going to be t squared. That's my parameter, t, comma, and then I'm just using t for my y coordinate. So if I'm solving for x, that equation is just going to go right there, but you swap out the variable for t and make it the parameter. And again, the domain is all real numbers. And when I say that domain, I'm talking about the restriction on the parameter, this t value. And I'm going to go forever to the left on the negative side and forever to the, on the positive side of, for t uh, to create this graph because it goes on forever and ever. All right, so that's it for parabolas. Real simple. Now let's do ellipses. For the ellipse, I went ahead and put the standard form equation of an ellipse here just as a quick reminder. So here we have our standard form. Remember that the a squared is underneath the x, the y squared is underneath the b, and it is addition for an ellipse. So to create the, per, per, the parametric equations, it is going to be that the x of t is going to equal h plus a cosine of t. So how are you going to remember this? Well, the, the h is simple enough. It's always with the x. So this is the center of the, of the ellipse. So it's the center of the ellipse of the x-coordinate plus. Now realize this is a. It's not a squared, so it's, you have to take the square root of that. So a. And then cosine, well, you remember on a... On a uh, a unit circle, the unit circle and x and cosine are tied together. Like the cosine value is the x part of the coordinate point and the sine value is the y coordinate, pi coordinate point. So there is kind of a connection there, hopefully, if you remember the unit circle. So ho hopefully that helps you memorize this. All right, but once you have standard form of an ellipse and you have to recognize that it's an ellipse, see, positive, then creating the parametric equations, it's really simple. Let's just real quick write down what a is. a here is 4, b is 3. So then our uh, parametric equation is, let's do the h, so the center with the x, that's 2, plus a, so in this case it's plus 4, because it's the square root of that, and then we have our cosine of t. So there's the x-coordinate point. The y-coordinate point is the center, so it's 5, uh, plus b, because it's the square root of whatever is underneath there, so 3. And now for, for the y value, it's always going to be sine of t. And that's it. That's how that works. Okay, let's just do one more quick example of this one. Uh, again, it's addition, so it doesn't matter which, which one comes first, x or y. You just have to remember uh, that this is the a underneath the x. So we're going to go a is equal to the square root of 13. You don't need to figure out what that is. It's just Leave that as exact form, not a decimal. And then b is uh, square root of 25, which is 5. So my equation, negative 3 plus the square root of 13. And the x-coordinate is always the cosine. And then what's the y? The y is the center of it is 1 plus 5. 
y values are connected with the sine value. So there is the per parameterization, parameterization, there we go, parameterization of this ellipse. All right, ellipses are done. Now let's do hyperbolas. Hardest one on here, but that's only because it's got some memorization that you've, you've uh, got to remember. Okay, so hyperbolas. Remember, if it's a left or right uh, hyperbola, that means we're talking about a, a hyperbola that's opening like that, left or right. And if that's the case, the x value is going to be positive while the y is the negative. Whereas a hyperbola that's up and down, like this, if it's up and down, it's the y value that is going to be the positive one. Okay, just so that's the standard form, so we remember that. Okay, so I'm going to see, uh, I try to think of some ideas that would help you remember this, memorize, and I think I've got it. So look at which one's positive. When it's opening left and right, x is positive. When it's opening up and down, y is positive. So let me show you what that means. For the parameterization, we get this. So it has secant is going to be involved when it is positive. Whichever term is positive. So if the x is positive, you've got secant there. For this one, if the y is positive, we've got secant on this one. And then you just have to connect the coordinate points. So it's the h that goes with the x and the a that goes with the, the x as well. Down here, what goes with the y value? The k is with the y. The b is with the y. And then it's always secant is the one that's positive. <laughs> okay. I know that you're probably like, what the heck? Uh, I know, it's confusing. So then let's go to the uh, the negative one. For the negative, we're going to use tangent. So they they're both have tangent, uh, and then you just use its corresponding center point and the corresponding uh, square root of the denominator to get the other parts of this. Now, one thing I didn't mention, I don't think I mentioned this on the ellipse either, is that th there is a restricted domain for only 0 to 2 pi for both of these. Um, if we go back up to the ellipse, let me just show you real quick. The reason for that is if we... For an ellipse, we only need to go in one circle. So it's just 0 to 2 pi. There's no point in going 4 pi, 6 pi. I mean, it creates the same graph. So we can restrict the domain of the parameter to just 2 pi. And that's the same with these. We just restrict the parameter to 2 pi to help us set up these, uh, these hyperbolas. That's the memorization. Positive 1 goes with secant. And then it's just those other corresponding parts for the center and then the square root of the denominator. The negative 1 is tangent. So let's do that. these two examples, and then we're done with the lesson. Uh, identify first that it's a hyperbola. It is subtraction. Subtraction. These are both hyperbolas. For this one, the a value is going to be whatever's underneath x. So in this case, it's uh, 12, square root of 144. b is going to be 5. And uh, okay, so which one is positive? The x is positive. So this one has the secant, and this one has the tangent of t. Uh, okay, and then we have... So the center is negative 1 plus the square root of the denominator, which is 12, secant of t, comma. Now we go to the y-coordinate, which is going to be the center is 4 plus the square root of that is 5. And then this one's tangent. The negative 1 will be tangent of t. And that's it. So as you can see, really, it's just a memorization and then plug and chug. Plug where the, uh, the values go in correctly. All right, here, let's do this one next. The a value is going to be, it's the one underneath the x, so it's the square root of 4 is 2. The b is the square root of 36. Uh, now, which one is positive? y is positive. This one's going to be the secant. This one's the tangent, so it's always the positive is secant. So for the x-coordinate, we do 1 plus the square root of 4, which is 2. And then this one is the tangent of t because it's negative, comma, the y value. Now we start with the center, which is negative 3. And then we add the square root of the bottom, which is 6. And then it is secant because this one's positive. The positive one becomes secant of t. Boom. And then that's it. That's what you're practicing today. You're parameter parametrizing parametrizing <laughs> parametrizing all of these different functions in particular the ones with conic sections okay we finished up unit 4a uh so this is mr bean signing off good luck on the master check and uh, hopefully on your test as well and uh and i'll pass it off to mr sullivan for the last part of unit four